Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to this video about styling. Um, and specifically, we're going to talk about styling with CSS and Sassy CSS. Um, so before that, I'd like to give you a, a small recap of inline styling, which I've been doing, I think, once or twice before uh, in this course. Um, so right here, I got a uh, React app opened. You know, it just, you know, there's nothing in here. We have got our app component with our CSS file. And um, let's say we are going to put a header in here. Let's say this is a header. And I'm gonna save it. It should show the header right here. Now we can, let's say we want to change the color of the header to red. Then we can use inline styles. We could say style, oh, style and then having like these double curly brackets and then we can say color should be red and this works but um like to emphasize that this is really bad practice i you know there's very very little use cases to use inline styling so prevent that at all costs because you can imagine if you have a lot of styles you have to like combine them like this all in line and at a certain moment, it just becomes very hard to read what is actually going on. So it's easier, where actually I could say better, to keep your style separated from your uh, HTML right here. Um, and we can do that by simply using CSS. So I can put right here a class name. And the reason that we can't use class is that class is a reserved keyword in JavaScript. So that's why we have to use class name. And I could, for example, call this header. And now when I go to my CSS file, I want to delete this, I can create a new class and I can say color should be red. And now even when I save it, it does not work because we have to import that CSS file we can simply do so by saying app.css because it's in the same um, directory as the uh, app.jsx file. Now when I save it, you will see the color is being applied. So that's a much better way to um, add styles um, in our components. So we get a nice, you know, separation, you could say between the um, JavaScript or JSX and our styles, our CSS. Um, we can also do some conditional rendering. So let's do that for now. Um, let's say that if the length of the header is more than five characters, we want to have the text shown uh, with the color of red and otherwise green. So I could say const, um, let's see, header text. And I will just put this in here. And then we can use the header text right here. And of course, this wouldn't make a lot of sense in, in a real uh, use case, but this is just for demonstration purposes. So now we can say if the header dot, uh, header text dot length is larger than five or, well, that's it for now, larger than five, then uh, we want to have the class set to header. Otherwise, we don't want to have any um, class name. So it equals to null. And now what you will see when I save this, now it still shows as red, but when I, let's say, let's, when we have four characters and I save it, we will not have the color being applied anymore. So that's a way to conditionally style your elements. Now, the thing with CSS is that it is not as feature rich uh, compared to CSS preprocessors like Sassy CSS or SCSS, as some people call it. Uh, and for good reasons, because uh, I personally also like to use uh, something like Sassy CSS, is simply because it has uh, a lot of, you know, nice features. Some people call it like CSS on steroids or CSS with superpowers. And, um, and it's true. And I think there are three things that are really nice. Um, you can NAS selectors, uh, such as media queries, which I will show you in a minute. 
Um, there are things like CSS partials and, and extending styles. We won't be covering in this video because it's uh, a little bit out of scope for, uh, for this video. Um, but those are really nice things. And to give you an example of that, let's imagine we want to add a media query right here where we say that whenever the screen um, goes beyond 768 pixels, the color should be green. And if it's uh, equal to that or smaller than, then it should show a color of red. So in CSS, we need to do something like this. We can say add media, and then we say max uh, width is um, 768 pixels. And then in here, we could say that the header should have a color of red or let's do it the other way around. So um, if it's um, if it's like a, like a smaller device, we have a color of green, otherwise it will be red. So now when I save this and I change the, the size of the screen, you will see the media query kicking in. Now, this is, you know, this is easy to read, but often you will find CSS files with like maybe even hundreds of lines of uh, CSS rules. And it just becomes really hard because you have to like define every uh, class like twice uh, if you have media queries. And it's just much nicer to, for example, have it right here. All right. So you nest that media query inside of your uh, initial selector, you could say. Um, so we don't need this anymore. Now this with just, you know, normal CSS uh, wouldn't work. Um, because if I save it now and I refresh the app, now when I change the width of the screen, nothing happens. Um, so let's actually install um, Node SAS so we can use Sassy CSS files. Uh, I, I would like to emphasize though that I do not recommend to like deeply nest classes or elements right here because um, in here we could also say that inside class header, we want to target like uh, some other class. And then in there you could say, uh, go even deeper. That's what she said. Like, you know, you can, you can go as, as deep as you want. Um, but the thing is that this is very hard to maintain. And as soon as you, uh, I don't know, like for example, uh, remove this class, like all your styles will be gone. Really bad idea. So usually, it's just much better to um, to prevent like nesting classes and elements whatsoever, uh, except for example, media queries, which is uh, perfectly fine to do. And let's say we have another class, we just want to write that class right here. And then if you have like another class, you can do it right here and so on. So uh, let's actually install node SAS. So I'll close this and I will say npm install node sass and i will get back to you once it's installed great so now it's installed and i can just start the app again i'll close this window and now instead of calling this app.css we will change the name to app.css and you will see that now this um color is up so this will work now but it will say it cannot find app.css because we also have to change it right here. So let's do that. And now when I um, you know, change the width of the screen, you will see it will work. So now we added the uh, sassy CSS to make this work, which is nice. Um, however, this can still be a problem if we are going to style our React app like this. Because let's imagine we have another component. Uh, I'll call it, I don't know, header component. Just save this for now. And let's call it header component, which is like a, inside of a header one tag. Like this. And then we also want to, uh, let's see, we want to import some styles, but we want to import the header component styles file, 
which we is not yet existing. So let's create that component.scss. There we go. And now let's copy the styles from here to there. Uh, and um, I will also ensure that our app renders that um, header component. There we go. So now we got our header component. And let's say for this component, instead of red and green, we want to render, I don't know, yellow and purple. And now when I save it, I also have to, of course, add the class right here. So this will be header. And now you will see that even though we have different styles in both components, right? Right here we have red and green for the header. Here we have yellow and purple. It shows both the same colors. And the reason for that is that we now have to do with a specificity problem. Because if I, for example, go to our first um, header, which is right here, you, you do see that uh, the yellow color has overridden our red color. Now, this is a very common uh, issue in, in uh, using uh, whether it's CSS or Sassy CSS, it doesn't really matter. This is, you know, this is simply how CSS works, right? So to prevent this from happening, you could say, for example, let's change the uh, the header class name. Um, and then, of course, it, it could work. But you can imagine if you have like a very large code base, like a very big React tab, it's very likely that you will somewhere have the same class name. And there are things like BAM, which is a sort of method to, um, to have unique CSS class names uh, in place to prevent this. I think there's something much easier to use, and that is CSS modules, which we are going to take a look at in the next video. So I'll see you there.